Welcome to a field guard of spiritual warfare. Today we're going to talk about your spiritual authority in Christ. A lot of times when we go out and help people with M16 ministries, uh, the first thing our, when we arrive is to assist people where their spiritual authority is at. And what we've encountered, it doesn't matter if they're, they're non-believers, they're people that probably went to church off and on and maybe left church, or the people who are 20-year strong Christians. Many times we find out people just don't understand what their authority is in Christ. A lot of times, too, from the Christian perspective, when we arrive on a scene, maybe a Christian family is you know, strong in their faith and they have some sort of issue going on with the house haunting, which is demonic activity, or they could have something else going on, you know, um, maybe some spiritual activity or spiritual attachment to one of their family members, they always come to us, you know, because it's been the torment to them. It's been total torment. We always hear that um, quoted to us first is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man, and God is faithful. They usually stop there. So what they're saying is, you know, I thought God wouldn't give you any more I can handle. Yeah, that's true. God will never push you beyond what you're capable of handling, but Satan will. Satan asked to sift Peter. I've heard in Greek translations with that, Satan didn't ask to sift Peter. He demanded to sift Peter. And so Jesus said, I'll pray for him. So a lot of times, too, we see um, the enemy just has access to us to, to test us in temptations and stuff. So... 1 Corinthians 13 means, yeah, we will be put in situations that aren't beyond our capability that Jesus knows. Jesus knew the capability of Job, too, when he went through his trials. So a lot of times trials just stink, all right? Um, they happen to us. They're usually built to expand us, and some trials are horrible. We don't know why people get sick and then come out of it. People get sick and, and, you know, and don't come out of it and aren't never healed. We don't know why people are, are you know, tormented by evil men, you know, ask... Um, Women who grew up in the molestation cases, why did it happen to them? We don't know, but evil is allowed to thrive. And we don't understand what this, what, you know, why would God allow this to happen to us? We don't know. It's, it's, it just happens. But the fact of the matter is, um, God will never push you beyond what you can handle, even if it's severe torment. And we've seen that. Um, let's look at 1 Peter 5.8. Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The devour means destroy, right? And sometimes Christians don't have a concept. They have this concept that after the cross, the devil is powerless. I've heard that in so many sermons. You know, it just it's just like, no, 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 the devil's not powerless. The devil's defeated. There's a big difference. The devil's still roaming around causing collateral damage. He knows his lease is up. He knows he lost the war. Even his demons know it. We're in scripture. The demons understand scripture. They know it. So he's running around like a, like a lion, devouring, destroying. And some people we work with fully understand what that means to destroy their lives. Satan's done their best to destroy their lives, but Jesus always comes in and flips things around. Um, and many times, too, the adversary always points it back at Jesus. Hey, where was Jesus when this was happening? And that's, that's part of the biggest argument they have there. So Christians overlook all of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. They always misquote the first half, saying, oh, I didn't know Jesus would give us any more we could handle. He didn't, but he also gave us a way out through spiritual warfare. If we look at the second half of the verse, but with temptation will provide you the way of escape also, so that you'll be able to endure it. Keyword endure. A lot of stuff we have to endure, and God lets us walk out. And that's why to have spiritual authority. There's no magic bullets. A lot of Christians think there's just a clap of their hand, a magic incantation, and things heal. No, that's witchcraft. Things don't work that way. And if you want the authority over witchcraft too, it comes through Jesus. And sometimes we have to walk through stuff to see the see the you know see the ending of the, the battles we're enduring. So God did provide a way out, and it's by giving us the authorities over the power of darkness. A couple notes on ministry approach. Since this is the beginning of the spiritual authority, when we arrive on site, we always evaluate the spiritual dynamics in the house with the person or what's going on. Is this person a non-believer who calls for help? Is this person somebody that kind of sort of goes to church, doesn't really understand the Bible? Or is this somebody that's a 20-year strong Christian and just, they're just getting a pounding from the enemy? We assess what the situation is, but consider this, no matter where they're at, Jesus is always going to do something about the situation. You have to be assess situations and talk to Jesus a lot of times when it involves non-believers. Actually, it involves believers. Sometimes they have some hidden sins going on. You have to uncover what they are, be a detective, and figure it out. And a lot of times let the Holy Spirit do it. So 
when we first arrive on site, we assess what's going on in the spiritual dynamics of the house or the person or who came to us for deliverance. I usually set, what I do is I let them sit down, tell their story, listen to it, just take some notes. A lot of times they'll tell you the whole story. Christians right now in deliverance are falling into the trap of the checklist deliverance thing. Neil Anderson is great. It's great for a lot of stuff. But you don't pull out the checklist right away. Um, no. <laughs> a lot of times you can get just as much information by having them tell their story. If you ask questions, a lot of times they're going to answer your questions but not reveal what's going on, if that makes sense. So I may sit for two hours. Sometimes we'll go, this is a counseling session. Yeah, I'm a spiritual counselor. I'll sit down and listen to their story for two hours or longer and listen to what comes out. One recent session, I found out that one woman was being um, molested and raped by her younger brother. And that didn't come out during the, 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 the question mark, um, you know, um, checkbox uh, uh, deliverance sessions where are you allergic to shellfish, you know, or are you allergic to this medication? Do you have witchcraft? I mean, it, it's good and all, but it has its purpose in places. I think the first start is to listen to the person's story. Um, number two, just reinforce the believer's authority. If they're a believer, God gave us, all believers have supernatural authority over the powers of darkness. It's just there. We're involved in a spiritual war. It's going on. The devil has powers. And somehow in this weird cosmic mystery of battle, we're involved in it. We'll discuss more on this a little bit later as we discuss more on a field guide spiritual warfare, your authority in Christ. I hope you enjoyed this first session. Thank you.